So we're now hearing Thank you for me. the auto industry here in the U.S. is opposing these tariffs. So do you understand who these tariffs are meant to help? Well, what, what the, the president is doing is he's trying to level the playing field. When you have the EU with a 10 percent tariff versus an American tariff of 2.5 percent, that's fundamentally unbalanced and unfair. And so what this is all about is trying to equalize between the EU and America that trading pl uh, platform so that it's fair and equal for both of us going forward. And yet cars will become more expensive coupled with higher gas prices that we're already seeing. How will this impact the American consumer? Well, I think long term, the, the message is clear. We need the EU and us uh, to come to the table to negotiate uh, these tariffs, these barriers to, to trade between the two entities and get us to an even and level playing field. And I, I'm confident we could get there. So, you know, maybe we could have a zero uh, tariff both ways. Uh, to me, that would be a great uh, opportunity will, for us to develop this industry further. Will the American public be patient enough to wait for that to happen? You know, that's obviously a, a very great question. And uh, long term, I think we come out of this much stronger as a nation. Short term, there is going to be some disruption. But that's the disruptive force this administration is bringing to the table. Yeah, you know, I was up in New York yesterday, and, and you, talk, you talk to folks up there. They're trying to gauge what all of this means. There's so much political uncertainty. But to, to you and Sherry's point, I mean, the EU is not totally on the same page on this. Germany is not at all okay with, with getting rid of all tariffs. So when the EU commissioner pre president comes next week, is he, I mean, how does he get the Germans on board? It's not just trying to get President Trump on board. I, I hope the message that he receives here is if you think that this uh, disruptive trade policy is going to go away, that's just not the case. Uh, we are going to continue to push the American agenda and we're going to make sure that, look, at all we're looking for is a equal level playing field and come to the table, let's negotiate, work these differences out. And I think that will be a strong message to the EU and I think that's a good message that they need to adhere to and listen to. Earlier today, I spoke with the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, uh, Chairman Kevin Brady, and, and he was open to the idea of having Congress pass legislation to rein in some of the president's use of Section 232. Do you support that? You know, I think uh, when you talk about Article 1, uh, the delegation of authority from Congress to the president for decades, uh, I am generally supportive of, of Congress doing its role of being a check and balance on the administration. But I, I don't believe that's a practical path forward, given that, uh, you know, that would require the president to sign into law the exact authority that he's, he's exercising to bring this disruptive policy. So I'm more about uh, making sure the president knows. So we're concerned about the short term impacts, but we stand with him in regards to the long term positive outcome we're all trying to achieve with an uh, equal level playing field in trade partners across the world. We have data from the Dallas Fed that looks at the total impact of tariffs. And we can see that New York would be one of the hardest hit if we can get uh, that map up for the congressman. Although you can't see it right there, we can sh tell you that it's a projected hit of around 8 percent to your real estate GDP. Coupled with the tax reform that capped the salt deductions on your constituents, the trade impact on top of that, what are your constituents telling you right now? Um, what I hear, and remember, there, there are really two different New Yorks. There's New York City and the rest of New York. I represent that area of New York where, the, for example, the salt uh, deduction, 99 percent of the folks that we represent are protected by that $10,000 compromise we, we were able to secure in regards to the tax policy. So it, it's different from downstate to upstate. But at the end of the day, what I hear from our constituents is they recognize this disruptive policy needs to occur. The fight that the administration is doing is something they support, and I believe they're going to stand with him long term. When it comes to these trade negotiations, the president keeps pushing for bilateral trade deals. Is a NAFTA collapse acceptable to you if bilateral trade deals are put in place with Canada and Mexico? My, my hope is, is that we can do NAFTA together with Canada and Mexico, and that's the message I sent uh, to their representatives. Uh, but uh, make no mistake about it, if only one party, Mexico, is willing to negotiate, uh, then I think they're going to get a very favorable deal over the, the Canadian negotiations, and vice versa. If Canada is willing to negotiate, then maybe Mexico will have to deal with other consequences. My hope is we resolve this under the NAFTA framework, but if not, we have to do with the partners that are willing to work with us a deal that benefits both sides of the equation. Switching gears, Russia, the president has tweeted about this. He's given some follow-up interviews. Do you think he corrected course following Helsinki? 
I think he made it very clear uh, where he stood. Uh, meddling, yes, the Russians have engaged in meddling. But when you look at collusion, there's been no evidence of collusion with American actors uh, that has come out of this investigation. It's time to move this chapter of our political life behind us and focus on the problems that are impacting people today in regards to jobs, in regards to the economy, in regards to their national security concerns. And so uh, my, uh, my hope is, is the, the American people hear loud and clear uh, where we stand. Collusion, no evidence of meddling. Uh, clearly, the Russians are, are engaging in that, and we need to make sure that that doesn't uh, mess up the uh, elections going forward.